In this video, we're going to see how to take the composition of two functions. We're going to start off with the functions being polynomials. In the first example, the function f is 2x squared plus 1, and the function g is 3x minus 5. We want to look at doing f circle g and g circle f. Now, I have the little degree symbol here. Typically, that circle is sort of a little lower, right about midway uh, between the top and bottom of the letter. But uh, I couldn't find the correct symbol, so I'm using the degree symbol. Just keep that in mind. All right, so what is this crazy new notation, f circle g? Well, the definition is this is f of g of x. And what that means is that we're going to replace the input for f with g. And the input for f is the x that shows up in the f equation. So everywhere you see x in the f equation, you're going to replace that with the g equation, 3x minus 5. So let's go ahead and show this middle step. We're going to replace g of x with 3x minus 5, because that's what g of x equals, 3x minus 5. And we're basically completing this equation here, but replacing x with the 3x minus 5. So that means we need to replace that x with 3x minus 5. It's a good idea to use parentheses everywhere you substitute in. Okay, so we've got, got the equation here, and then you want to think about simplifying it. And in this case, we could simplify this polynomial by writing the exponent as a product. We've done this quite a few times, so I'm not going to go into all the details here, but we'll have the product of those will be 9x squared minus 30x plus 25. And we go in and multiply by the 2. 9 times 2 is 18. 30 times 2 is 60. 25 times 2 is... 50, and then just add the 1 to get 51. So there's the composition f of g, or the composition of f with g. And switching the order will give us a different result. Let's take a look at g circle f. That g of f of x, and that means we'll be replacing uh, the input for g with 2x squared plus 1. That's the output for f. So f of x equals 2x squared plus 1. So that's our input. And what does the g equation look like? So we're just going to take this equation and replace x with the 2x squared plus 1. And we get something like that. Okay, again, we can simplify this. It's actually a little easier in this case because we don't have to we don't have to square anything. We just have to distribute this three 
and combine like terms. Distributing the 3 will have 3 times 2x squared, which is 6x squared, and 3 times 1, which is 3. To combine like terms, we'll do 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. So what's the domain of the new functions? Well, if you look at f circle g, it's a quadratic function. If you look at g circle f, it's also a quadratic function. And so both are polynomials. So the domain is all real numbers. And we don't have to evaluate these in this example, but we will do it in the next example. So in our second example, we have more complicated functions. Uh, f is going to be a radical or square root function, and g of x is going to be a rational function. And we want to know what the value of the compositions are at certain x values. So we're going to find the composition function first and then evaluate it. So we're going to replace the input for f, which is the x in this, in this equation, with the output for g, which is 3x over x plus 3. Let's put that in there. And here is the normal equation for f. We're going to replace x with that. Okay, and there are some ways to simplify that. And I'll just refer you to the, the written methodology notes for how that works. Let's go ahead and look at the other way to do this. So that would be G circle F. That's where we do g of f of x. So we're now replacing the input of the g equation, which is the x is there, with the output of the f equation. So f of x is square root of 2 minus 4x. So let's replace f with that. All right, our g equation looks like this, but again, we're replacing these inputs. Those are the inputs for that equation. We're replacing them with square root of 2 minus 4x. So we get that equation. Looking at the domain of these, you can see we have both the situation of division by zero and square root of a negative to be concerned with. It might not be obvious what these domains are, and while we could do this analytically, it's probably good to just take a look at the graph and figure out the domain from there. So if we were to graph this, So you can see from the domain of this one, that x is limited between 0.6 and 
some vertical asymptote probably at negative 3, right? Because when x is negative 3, we have that division by 0. Yeah. So our domain is from negative 3 to about 0.6. Now let's take a look at the other one. And in this one we have this thing starting at about one half, which is where you would get 0 for the radicand, right? And then going off to negative infinity. So negative infinity up to 1 half. Anything bigger than 1 half is going to give you a square root of a negative, and that's why that won't be appearing there. So we can now find the value of these things at certain x values. Uh, f circle g of 2 is undefined. We saw the graph was not defined for x larger than about 0.6. And g circle f is defined at negative 1. And we can just use this formula and replace x with negative 1. After some simplifying, you'll see this is 2 plus 4, which is just square root of 6. And we probably don't want to mess with it any more than that. You could approximate that using a calculator, but that's going to be as exact as it gets.